As the world's largest democracy gears up for the general elections, it's worth taking a step back to understand the institutional aspects of what keeps the Indian democracy ticking. At the core of it, when Indians head to the polls, they will be electing members of the 17th Lok Sabha or the lower house. The Lok Sabha, which is the House of the People, contains 545 seats and the general elections will send politicians from all across India to fill 543 of those seats. The remaining two representatives will be appointed by the President of India. In the Indian system, the Prime Minister is the head of the government and is appointed by the Lok Sabha rather than elected directly by voters. The party holding a majority in the Lok Sabha elects its leader as the Prime Minister. Should no party possess a simple majority, different parties will form coalitions until they acquire the requisite number of seats to elect a Prime Minister successfully. Any party or coalition needs a minimum of 272 MPs to form a majority government. Now let's talk about the important steps involved in the election procedure, which include formation of constituencies. Now the country is split up into separate geographical areas known as constituencies. India has been divided into 543 parliamentary constituencies, each of which returns one MP to the Lok Sabha. And the electors can cast one vote for the candidate of their choice in their own constituency. Second is filing of nominations. The regulations require all candidates to file the nomination papers with the returning officer. The returning officer scrutinizes the nomination papers carefully. Then, the Election Commission, which is the federal authority responsible for administering all the electoral processes of India, publishes a list of the candidates. Then comes the election manifestos. A manifesto is a formal statement of the objectives, policy and aim of an individual, group, political party or the government. It is released with a view to attract maximum voters. Election campaigns are the most popular ways of appealing for votes. Parties and candidates organize public meetings and rallies door-to-door -door canvassing to carry out their messages to the voters. Now, the election campaign must be stopped 48 hours before the polling day as per the model code of conduct. Now, presiding officer supervises the whole of the polling process and ensures that all persons working under him adhere to the electoral norms and practices. Voters in the 2019 Lok Sabha elections will find for the very first time the faces of the candidates along with their respective party symbols in the electronic voting machines or the EVMs. And for the very first time again, voter verifiable paper audit trail will be used in all EVMs which is designed to allow voters to verify their vote was cast correctly. After the polling has ended, the voting machines are sealed and carried under custody to the counting stations. Then the process of counting the votes begins. As per Indian laws, the counting of votes is done under the supervision and direction of the returning officer of the constituency. Contesting candidates, election agents as well as counting agents are allowed to be present at the counting venue. Now, this time, the Lok Sabha elections will be held in seven rounds from April 11th till May 19th and the results will be announced on May 23rd.